Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we'll discuss how to manipulate or change edit trusses in Revit architecture and Revit structure. You'll see an example here I have up on the screen. That's what we're going to end up with. But we'll start with a standard truss and manipulate it. Let's go to Revit. I'm going to jump screens here. Oh, by the way, if you need more information on our company or what we do, we do Revit support and training nationwide. You can locate us at CADTech Seminars seminars.com or the bimguys.com all right off to Revit and here we are now I've got this set up I'm gonna go undo it all the way back to the beginning so there's no smoke and mirrors here and um, there we go so there's nothing in the model it's time to start a truss now my icons may look a little different because I'm running a compressed screen so I hit truss now just like anything else in, in Revit you can load families like doors and windows you can load multiple different truss types now I have uh, just a standard how flat truss. You can load different ones as needed. You can even create your own using the family editor. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just start it. I'm just going to draw from point A to point B. Now one of the little tricks is what um, piece of steel is it going to use to create that truss? Well what it does is it uses whatever is was used last uh, to put a beam in. Okay, So if I come up here and hit beam and just to show you, you see it says 1226 now I'm gonna use the HHS here six by six right so I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna draw just a little piece just like so so I draw it in I'm actually even just gonna delete it now what that does it kinda of presets the truss just a little trick so I hit truss now at this point I pick a start point and I pick an end point and we'll go to a it really doesn't matter how long it is and now Revit is creating that truss so let's go check it out now I'm going to click here and it's going to go to elevation and there it is. Now if I hover over one, over one of these elements and I hit tab and I select it, you'll notice it's using that HHS 66. So that's how, uh, that's a quick tip when you're setting them up. Now let's start to manipulate this truss. Um, first of all, we'll do some things with the, in the uh, properties box. I select the truss and as we go down you'll notice that there are some properties here. Trust height, let's say I need to only be 9 feet tall. Uh, at this point you'll see it changes and it'll change the height to 9 feet. If I go down a little further you'll see panel width. You'll, the panel width is from pretty much this vertical to this vertical uh, and that says max so we can come over here and change that to let's say 12 feet uh, get a little bit different result uh, and again it's going to recalculate the truss and you can see we got something going on there. So you change this truss to whatever number you want and it'll reset those numbers. Again you can set up reference lines, do some math, figure out what you need to have it do. Alright, so uh, that'll get that working. The next thing we'll take a look at is I'll select the actual truss again and we'll go to edit type. Now when edit type you'll see it says when creating the truss it's set framing type. So whatever the, the framing type is set to, a, or the, let's say the beams, it will use that framing type. You can say no, whenever I create these I want you to always use an HHS. For the diagonals I always want you to use an HHS. Now that's going to set those two so they always use those particular points, uh, excuse me, types. So kind of cool there. And a couple other things you can tinker with in here to, to kind of set up what you want. I'm now going to hit OK. And not much is going to change because we were already using H, H, HSS. So now next thing we will be doing is we'll take a look at the bottom and top cord. Being that the, the truss is highlighted, if we go up top you'll see it says edit profile. When I hit edit profile you'll notice that it actually comes alive and you see a purple line and a blue line. I can actually take this purple line okay, and I can just drag it or move it whatever I need to do change the location and when I hit finish just like a sketch sketch mode in Revit, Revit will then update to those locations so it's following those purple lines. Now if you want to get real fancy pants I'm going to roll over this thing again hit it edit profile again. Now when I hit edit profile you'll notice that we have the blue line at the bottom. I'm going to delete that. That's, that notes the bottom cord. You can actually delete it and redraw it. So bottom cord, I'm going to use an arc now. So I'm going to start at this point right here and I drag it over to this point right here. Now S, E, snap end point. It's got a little tip there. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to flex it up a certain distance. Again, all this stuff you can set up ahead of time with uh, construction lines and now it's going to redo the truss like so. So that's looking good so far. Uh, let's say we need to make a change in the design. Let's say these are all going to be the same space but on these two right here we're going to take this 
uh, diagonal member and we're going to bring it over here. Now you'll notice when we click on this you don't see a lot of editing for the uh, internal of the web but you can edit it. For instance I'll roll over this element and I'm going to hit tab. I can select that element. I can change what it is. I can say change it to concrete. Uh, and there it is. It's concrete. Now you're thinking may not need that. So I'm going to hit tab again. Select it. We can also delete it which is nice. So I can take that out. Okay. Now it wanted to set a pinned element was deleted so if I come over here and I grab this guy if I unpin it and then hit delete I shouldn't get much of a warning. So that's what that was all about. Tab, pick it, and I'm going to unpin it so I just don't get the warning. So I'll, I'm going to take this guy, pick it, unpin it just so I don't get the warning. Okay, so now we've, we've taken him out. I'll then take this guy, tab, selecting, unpin him, and now we have, as you can see, the little blue reference or stretch points. I can drag it to where I need it to be. This would be a good time to set up some reference points and we can get it exactly where we need it to be. Again, tab, pick it, uh, unpin it, and then we'll drag it to where it needs to be. Now, being that we've uh, removed it pretty much from the, um, excuse me, removed it from the basic set, you may be worried that what if we move the truss? I'll grab the truss, I hit the move command, and I'm going to take a point here, and I'll drag it over here. You'll see the truss moves as a unit still. So don't panic if you unpin them and adjust them. So there we go. Now we have uh, our own custom truss, and uh, so a couple of things we can do with these trusses. If you do have uh, a roof or a slab, you can tell Revit to attach the top and bottom cords to the roof structure above or to something below, which makes it nice. Um, you can reset the truss, you can reset the profile. There's a lot of things you can do um, take it a little bit further. Last thing we'll do is we'll go to 3D. You'll see the truss. Um, I'll then take the truss and I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Um, and I will copy it in a different direction, like so. Uh, so there we have, whoop, that was move, hey, when it happens, copy, pick a base point, drag in that direction, we copy it. So uh, we have those trusses now. So not, uh, not that complicated, as long as you know a few of the tricks. So hopefully you enjoyed that tip of the week. Uh, if you have any questions, check us out on the web uh, at kedtechseminars.com.